Hey folks, how y'all doing? You read the description. Yeah, we're gonna do uh, some work on the uh, master built uh, gravity series, and, and this is the uh, rotisserie, more 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 specifically the rotisserie mortar. And at the root of the problem, you can see the issues here. I used it once, and you can see the wear marks there. So everything was working, and then as things warmed up, things expanded, and actually the uh, the uh, rotisserie was going back and forth. It wasn't going all the way around. It would go to the right and then it'd get like hung up and then it would go to the left and get hung up and then go to the right. And I think what's happening here is that uh, this thing is, when it's warm, getting warm, it's expanding and it's not allowing that square drive in there to turn. And we're gonna take this apart. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. And I'm gonna show you a simple fix too. At least I hope it's a simple fix that'll uh, make this problem go away. And you're gonna say, well, Tom, why not send it back? And, and well, there's no guarantee if I sent this back and got a new one, that the new one would be any better than the old one. So if, if you got one of these and you like your rotisserie and you know you don't wanna send it back and you wanna try and fix it, I'm gonna show you how today. And um, you're right, it'll probably void the warranty. Keep on watching, folks. All right, so in order to help you understand what's going on here, there's a plug and this is the plug that fits in that hole right there. It fits in just like this. So the plug comes out and then your rotisserie, this part right here, fits from the outside and you got a bracket right here. It goes in a notch. And then this part right here comes off, not very easily, here like that. And then you've got this piece, which is the problem. And you can see right now it's, it's wedged in there. Come on, I just had this out. How can you be wedged in there? All right, I gotta get some tools. All right, this is the piece I was talking about. And you can see, you can see the rub marks there. So this piece fits in here. But when you have this screwed all the way into this, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put it in there like this. And we're gonna screw it in there all the way you can see it gets very, very tight at top. And as the metal expands, it starts to rub on here and that's what stops it. So all we're gonna try and do, and I tell you what, let's, let's plug it in first and show you. All right, it's on. You can see the clearance there. I mean, it is tight. And when this gets warm from cooking, obviously it expands. And when it expands, that collar in there expands with it to this collar and that's what causes it to rub so my thoughts are we we could do two things here and i've had a couple of people tell me they've sprayed some wd-40 in there and that's helped and it may have and you can see oh it just did it right there it got so tight now now it reversed and that's what it was doing yesterday until it gets tight again and in this case what's happening is that it'll then unscrew this all by itself and that's not what you want to happen. So yesterday when this happened to me when I was cooking, I just loosened this up a little bit and it was it stayed on and I was able to finish off the cook, but I knew I had an issue. And you can see if I were to leave this long enough, it'll it'll screw itself. You can see we're already seeing threads there. It'll it'll screw itself it'll screw itself right off. So um we're gonna take this off and uh, look at that. That's not right. So we're gonna do we're gonna do a little grinding. All right, here down here in the shop. So I took that inside collar off, and I had some burrs on there. And all I've been doing is using my cordless cordless drill, like a lathe, got it chucked up in there. And then I'm just using a sanding block to apply some even pressure. Now, I don't want to take a whole lot off, but I want to get that burr off there, and I want to just take enough off off of there that that can fit into this without, it goes in like that, without any issues. But I don't wanna make it, and that's why I'm just using sandpaper, because I don't wanna get overly aggressive with that and take too much off. Now the people that are putting oil in there, just gotta be a little careful, because remember this whole part right here uh, actually is exposed inside the grill, so this could get hot, it will get warm, whatever temperature you set the grill at, and that could, you could get some fumes from that going into the into your food, so I'd probably advise against that. Uh, next thing I wanna do is I wanna take, take this off, 
and this is what I want to shorten off. I want to shorten up this end uh, by maybe an eighth of an inch. All right, so over on my belt sander, I already did a little bit, is that I'm just using my miter gauge in there. Like I said, I prefer to sand it or grind it as opposed to cutting it because cutting is probably just going to take too much. Also, then we need to remind ourselves we want to break all these corners. All right, let's try it out. All right, I'm gonna apply a little heat, just as if it's getting warm in the grill. Not too much, but just enough to see if that expands it and causes it to uh, get hung up. Appears to be working. Plenty warm. See, we're not tight. I almost feel like I want to take a little bit more off this, but I don't want to overdo it. I think I'm going to take just a little bit more off there and call it good. So I'll give you a look see at that. All right, plenty warm from the grinding, plenty warm yet from the uh, some putting some flame on there. And you can see we do have a little bit of a gap in there. And I think that's going to be good enough. So, uh, simple fix. We're going to install in the grill now and see how it fits in the grill. All right, got it installed. Applying some more heat. See what it does. All right, we're getting her plenty hot there. Still turning. Give you a look here. Yep, that's the way she's supposed to be working. I think we got it. We're going to go for a couple more minutes. Hit heat it up a couple more times to just make sure it doesn't seize. All right, I realized I didn't put a chicken on there or two chickens or anything like that, but I just wanted to make sure that everything works. So it hasn't reversed. It's been going in the way that I set it after I ground it and sanded it and uh, heated it up ahead at well over 350 degrees. So I'm thinking that it works. And you know, a lot of you are saying, well, Tom, this really isn't your issue. This is a master build issue. And you're right. This is a master build issue. And, uh, you know, yesterday I, I thought there was something I did wrong. And then I, what I ultimately did was I, I played around here thinking maybe I had this in the wrong, but I realized that's in the right, that's the right spot right there, not, not there, there is fine. And then I loosened that up and, be, and, it, and it worked for the rest of the cook, but I knew something was wrong. I had a bunch of people make comments and then, uh, then a couple of people said, hey, that happened. And they described the same exact thing had happened to them that happened to me. So then I started looking around at that collar and I noticed how tight it was. And it got me thinking that, you know, metal expands. So therefore, that had to be the issue. So I believe we took care of it. We remember we, we did some sanding on that outside, on that inside collar, that insert. So it wasn't as tight in that collar and then took a little bit off the length. And uh, so far, so good. We'll have to cook with it to find out for sure. But folks, I hope this was helpful. And once again, like I said, this is a master build issue. They should be taking care of it. But I took care of it for you here today, folks. Hope this was helpful. Tom Horseman at YouTube. Thumbs up, leave a comment, and as always, thanks for watching.